A common question in physics is, where did the kinematic equations come from? We can derive the kinematic equations from the acceleration equation. The acceleration equation states that acceleration is equal to the small change in velocity divided by the small change in time. Really, this is a rate. And with this and our knowledge of calculus, we can take this and get the other kinematic equations. First, we're going to take the derivative on the right and split it apart. Although it's not technically a fraction, you can treat it like a fraction by multiplying both sides by dt. And that gives us a times dt is equal to dv. Then we can integrate both sides. If we integrate the left side and we integrate the right side, we still need to put the appropriate limits of the integration or the bounds. For the acceleration side, we are going to have that go from time 0 to time t, whatever that time is. And on the right side, we're going to go from the initial velocity to the final velocity. Then we can integrate. We are going to rely on our rules of integration. And when that is done on the left side, we're going to get a with a new t added in there. That t has appeared, and we still need to evaluate it at the limit, so we're going to keep the 0 and the t. And that long bar notation tells us we haven't actually done the evaluative substitution yet. And that is equal to, on this side, you can think of it being a v to the 0th power. There is a v to the 0, which anything to the 0th power is 1. And according to, limit, according to integration rules, we are going to increase the power by 1 and then divide it by the total new power. So 0 plus 1 is 1. And then we're dividing that by 1, and that gives us just v. And we still need to evaluate it from initial to final, that actual change. So we can get rid of these things. And this is halfway through what we need to do. Now we actually need to substitute. When we do substitution, we do upper minus lower. So let's plug those in. We get a t. If we substitute t in for t, we just get t. Subtract away from that, so we've taken care of the top, the upper limit. Take away from that a, and then we're going to substitute in a 0, because that's what it says at the bottom limit. That, take, so that takes care of the left side, and on the right side, we're going to have v minus v naught. Substituting v in for v, giving us just v, and substituting v naught in for v, giving us just v naught. And at this point, we can see that it's going to be a cancellation. This term will cancel out, because anything times 0 is 0. And with some algebraic rearrangements, what we're going to get is that Final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. We can also get this from the more algebra-based definition, which says that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time, average acceleration. And we don't often put the change in time part just because usually we assume it starts off at the beginning of the time period for the problem itself. Plus, we know that delta anything, change in something, is really equal to final minus initial. So with this information, we could do a substitution using algebra and find that if acceleration is equal to final minus initial over time, we could still solve for the final velocity and get this. So that is how you would derive the first one. To derive the second one, we're actually going to use what we just got as our answer. So for number two, deriving the second kinematic equation, we're going to take what we just got, v is equal to v naught plus at. And we need to recognize something. The velocity part, final velocity, is equal to dx over dt. So the small change in position and the small change in time, that gives us the instantaneous velocity. So we can substitute this in. 
we can take dx over dt and substitute it in here. So let's do that. What we're going to have is dx over dt is equal to v0 plus at. Then, just like we did, we could take that derivative on the left in this case and treat it like a fraction, split it, so we can have two different changes, two different instantaneous or incremental changes on both sides of the equal sign, giving us dx is equal to v0 plus at. And since we multiply the entire right side also by dt, we're going to have dt on the outside here. Using algebra rules, we can distribute, and that might help us see what's happening more clearly. So let's do the distribution. We're going to have dx equals v0 dt plus at dt. And then we can integrate every term that has d something. So we're going to integrate the term on the left, the, sec the first term on the right, and the second term on the right. So let's put those integration symbols in. Remembering the rules of integration, which if you've taken calculus, you may have forgotten, so you can review. And if you haven't taken calculus, this is just a video you can watch out of interest to see where these come from, so that when you do take calculus, you can look back on this and remember. Looking at our limits, we can put those in. X is going to go from initial to final. V looking at the fact that dt, we're going from 0 to time t for both the terms on the right. Then we can do our integration. When we integrate the dx term, we're going to get the, almost out of thin air it seems, an x appears. But in reality, we know that there is an x to the 0th. We're going to add 1 to that 0th power and divide it by the new total power, and we just get x to the 1 over 1, which of course is just x. We still need to plug in our limits, so x0 to x. That is equal to, we're going to do something similar to the first term on the right, except now we're going to add in a t, so it's v0, our t has come in, and our limits are going to be from 0 to t. And then plus, on the other term, we have something special here. Let's take a look and examine this t here. This is a t to the first power, because it appears as it is. If we add 1 to that 1, we get t to the second power. But don't forget, we need to put all of that above the new total power, 1 plus 1. That becomes t to the 2 over 2, which, not, which, which can also be written as 1 half of t squared. So we can get rid of these. Now we see what the evaluation is going to look like. So what we have is the original a, and then we have a 1 half t to the second power. I put the 1 half in front of the a just because that's how it traditionally appears, but we know that 1 half is multiplied by a which is multiplied by t to the 2. We can move any of those around. This is just the typical order we see it as. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to t. Doing this, upper minus lower, we're going to plug in x for where x is, which gives us x, and subtract away x0. That equals v0 t, so we plugged in t for where t is, which gives us just t, and we're subtracting away from that v0 with a 0. So now we plugged in the 0 over where the t is. We're adding to this. We have 1 half a t as it is minus 1 half of a 0 squared. And we're going to have some cancellations. This term will cancel because anything times 0 is 0. And this, also, this term will also cancel out. Written out, it is x minus x0, which is equal to v0t plus 1 half of the acceleration times time squared. Because delta anything is final minus initial, you may also see this written out in this way. 
and I can just duplicate this part. So you'll see written out in multiple ways. These are equivalent. So then I can just put a box around this because this is another one of our kinematic equations. And finally, we also have, for the third one, a kinematic equation that takes a little bit more finessing. We know that acceleration is equal to dv over dt. So let's take a look at what v is. When we do this, we can see that dv, this instantaneous change in the velocity, is due to an instantaneous change in position over time, small, small segment of time, an instant in time. And likewise, we can take this same equation and solve for dt. So we get dt is equal to dx over dv. So we have two things we're gonna substitute. We're gonna replace dv with dx over dt, and we're gonna replace the dt with dx over dv. So when we do this, we're going to have this. a is equal to dx over dt all over dx over dv. The rules of fractions, we have a fraction and a fraction, says that a over b divided by c over d is the same as a over b times the upside down, which is d over c. So this becomes dx over dt times dv over dx. And we can see that it looks like the, the dx's are going to cancel out. So if I clean this up a little bit, what we get is this. So for this particular kinematic equation, we are given a constant initial velocity or a constant velocity of some type, and then we are adding to that velocity because we are accelerating over time. So for that reason, we are going to actually back replace this dx over dt with what it is, which is velocity. So here's what it looks like after we get to that point. We have acceleration is equal to v times dv over dx. So we are able to define acceleration without relying on time. So we can depend on velocity and then a change in velocity over some distance. So what this looks like is we're going to follow the same general principles, multiply both sides by the denominator of the derivative. We will get a times dx is equal to v times dv. Keep in mind that these d's here, they are not variables. This is a calculus symbol that means a very small instantaneous change. Now we can integrate both sides as we've been doing and putting the appropriate limits in. To determine the appropriate limits, you look at what's after the d. So for x, it's going to start off at initial and go to final. And then for v, it's going to start off at initial and go to final. Taking a look at what's invisible, so to speak, here we have an x to the 0. So that becomes x to the 1 over 1. That means an x appears. Here we have already a v, and we're evaluating at dv. So right here we have v to the 1. We're going to add a 1 to that and divide by the new total power of 1 plus 1. And that gives us what we've already seen. It's a 1 half v squared. So here's what that looks like. Evaluated, we have x, or we have a with an x now. And we still have our limits we have to plug in. And that is equal to, now we have, you can think of it as v times v. So the original v is there. And then we added in a new v, which is why it's v squared. But overall, we can just look at it like this. 1 half v squared. And we still need to evaluate from v naught to v. We can actually do our evaluations now. 
So a, plug in x for x and we just get x. Subtract away from that, a, plug in x naught for x and we get x naught. That is equal to one half of, we have the upper one, so that's gonna be just v. We're squaring that. Or subtracting away from that, one half of the v naught, which we're now plugging in, and we're still squaring it. So we just plugged in v and v naught successively for that v position there. We have some things that are similar on both sides. From algebra, we remember that we can factor things out. So on the left side, I'm gonna factor out the a, and that gives us a times x minus x naught. And on the right side, I'm gonna factor out the half. That gives us a half times v squared minus v naught squared. At this point, we have reached what looks like algebra-based kinematic equation. We can solve for final velocity without taking the square root. You can do that if you'd like to. But to get the traditional looking kinematic equation, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. That gives us two a, that we have x minus x naught. And that is equal to v squared minus v naught squared. We've also already seen that x minus x naught is really just delta x. So I'm gonna immediately just replace this with delta x. And then we can move these together. The last step is to solve for the final velocity squared. So after some algebra, what we're gonna get is that the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the displacement. And that gives us our final kinematic equation.